Hello everyone and welcome to this video on Enterprise Resource Planning, also known as ERP. Uh, so ERP is uh, really refers to a number of different things, all centered around uh, the ability to connect different systems, connect different data silos within an organization uh, to present an integrated system uh, to manage either some or all of the processes needed uh, for an operation or an organization. Uh, so it's often used to connect information silos uh, regarding purchasing, inventory management, uh, HR, billing, uh, invoicing and so on uh, to allow the organization to have a concise and clear overview of uh, different data systems and different interactions with outside parties. Uh, this really has become possible uh, due to um, business systems becoming predominantly, if not almost exclusively, uh, digitized and available uh, and accessible through information technology systems. Uh, but it's also at the same time become increasingly necessary as organizations transition to a um, mindset or perspective of uh, supply networks and supply chains. Uh, so products and services are no longer manufactured and delivered by single organizations. By and large, uh, they move through complex supply chains in, in many, many cases, um, not just national supply chains, but international supply chains, uh, both in terms of the raw materials uh, and also in terms of the manufacturing process. Uh, so goods today uh, are not really manufactured in single national locations, but in many cases, they're part manufactured or components are manufactured from uh, around the world. And then assembly may occur in one uh, uh, one country or one national location, uh, but it's difficult to say that the manufacturing occurs solely in one location. Uh, so if you couple country specialization with global uh, supply networks, uh, we have a very, very complex situation in regards to a, a web of interconnections and a web of, uh, of a supply chain links with many, many other different organizations and companies. Uh, so in this kind of increasingly complex web, uh, ERP is really a system designed to bring a semblance of order, uh, enable forward planning, and really enable uh, an organization uh, to bring in data from different systems, uh, provide a single place where different information systems interact, um, and where interactions and, and communication uh, enables the uh, the operation itself to be relatively transparent, increasing the visibility within the operation with its supply chain partners, both upstream and downstream. Uh, it really is this increased visibility um, within the operation that is particularly important in making sure um, that the supply chain itself runs smoothly. It's no longer enough to have coordinated supply chains um, because of short lead times, complex uh, manufacturing processes, logistical challenges, just the sheer geographical distances involved, um, operations themselves becoming more and more visible is really important. Uh, and this visibility, again, as I said, is both upstream with raw material suppliers and component suppliers, uh, as well as downstream regarding wholesalers, retailers and other uh, channels to reach the marketplace. Uh, we are going to look at variations in this kind of connective uh, software packages, uh, but you can see that there is a, a, the possibility and, and in some cases a reality of connecting almost all major functional systems uh, in terms of information systems, um, but many companies may implement ERP within certain parts of their organization or connect certain functional areas. Uh, so that could include manufacturing with distribution, connect purchasing information with CRM and sales, excuse me, uh, connect uh, finance with uh, customer web portals and direct communications with customers. Uh, this enables dashboards. Uh, so we have data dashboards which allow the presentation of data 
sourced from different areas of the organization from different systems in a managerial overview uh, often sometimes called managing by wire because it allows for almost instantaneous uh, display of information and data to really drive immediate operational decision making uh, also allowing for planning uh, detailed planning with real-time data uh, with various projects within the uh, organization or company uh, ERP systems in general also um, aim to eliminate or at least minimize data silo so a data silo is a situation within a, a, a business system where data is collected and used in a particular functional area or within a particular part of the business uh, but is not readily available or easily available in other areas of the business uh, so in this case if we have customer information that is gathered and uh, kept in crm systems customer relationship management systems uh, but is it necessarily available to the finance team or is it available to distribution teams or, or purchasing teams um, that becomes a data silo uh, so data silos are generally um, situations where data can be leveraged to either improve customer experience or increase efficiency within an operation uh, but that data isn't readily available uh, that can be because of system design a platform design and software package design uh, it can be because of a lack of automation it can be because of uh, interoperability issues uh, or it can just be because that data is never processed in a form where it's able to be uh, uh, easily connected uh, so ERP is not a simple straightforward process where we just have to plug a few things into each other they tend to be very large complex software packages and the implementation of ERP tends to be large and complex as well uh, it means taking raw data processing it in a form uh, where it's able to be connected and making sure that these systems are themselves interoperable so it is a large complex undertaking uh, however the benefits are really quite large uh, the significant benefits if uh, ERP is properly planned and implemented uh, so we have a huge amount of visibility which can occur we've said already that it increases visibility into the operation from outside third parties but also visibility uh, uh, increasing massively increased in terms of uh, what management is able to see with regards to what's happening uh, at the operational level uh, uh, in various parts of the business uh, this really gives a much larger sense of control uh, with regards to what's happening uh, so this can be just senior management being able to see if you're a logistics company uh, the position of various trucks and uh, your your lorries uh, the status of various projects uh, exact financial information from different stores uh, so this increased visibility this increased access to data uh, gives you a strong basis for continuous improvement um, so if you're rolling out so kaizen for example rolling out small uh, quality improvement measures uh, erp allows you to have a, a very fine-grained sense of progression you're able to monitor small positive or negative changes in your operation itself uh, communication is uh, radically boosted as well we've spoken about how erp allows for much greater visibility within the operation itself so from the customer perspective downstream or from suppliers upstream um, your operation allows for a lot more collaboration and visibility we see elements of this uh, certainly when it comes to things like amazon so amazon has a fairly sophisticated operation uh, and just the mere fact that if you order from amazon as a customer or a consumer you're able to see exactly where your package is how many stops until it's delivered if it's out for delivery where it is in various depots around the country all of this is visibility into amazon's operation so from a customer perspective it's a uh, significant step up but for suppliers and for business to business customers rather than consumer customers um, it really has big implications on their own planning 
so suppliers are able to see your exact inventory levels helps with their planning when it comes to um, you know dealing with their own raw material suppliers or adjusting their capacity levels uh, so that has has huge knock-on effects both up and down the supply chain uh, there are gradients to this kind of system integration though so we are going to work through four different levels uh, so at the bottom axis here this is increasing integration and at the top is the increasing impact on the supply network or the supply chain as a whole. Uh, so the first level would very much just be material requirements planning, where we identify uh, what materials are required and have a breakdown of the uh, uh, the materials into our particular product or component um, with big implications for inventory management, purchasing uh, uh, and ordering upstream uh, materials. Uh, we can move forward and look at other resources which are also required typically in the manufacturing process with manufacturing resource planning. So as well as materials, uh, whether they are components or raw materials, uh, other resourcing such as uh, the labor input that comes with staffing, rotor uh, uh, and labor levels with all the attendant HR systems can also be rolled in. So any other resources which need to be uh, identified, uh, integrated into our, our, our central system uh, and therefore all of the benefits when it comes to planning, monitoring and control activities uh, would be rolled up in manufacturing resource planning. So if we move to the third element, uh, which is traditionally called ERP, Enterprise, Enterprise Resource Planning, uh, we'll be bringing in other elements outside of just our manufacturing resources uh, so this can be order tracking so we can in integrate uh, downstream facing systems uh, order tracking logistics and other systems there and that would really round out our integration of various business systems and, and data from various parts of our organization uh, and a major uh, development in terms of ERP certainly recently uh, would be taking this ERP system uh, and actually integrating it with online platforms or, or moving it online in of itself so now ERP is not just uh, an integrate integrated system internally uh, but it both allows for mobile access and really critically allows for collaboration with upstream and downstream partners. So we move ERP from being a system to integrate uh, and collect data internally within our operation and we make it a tool for supply chain management. We actually make it a tool for linking in both upstream and downstream with our supply chain partners. Uh, it is this type of ERP, this kind of online collaborative uh, supply chain management orientated system that really enables the kinds of global supply chains we see today. Uh, what's significant about global supply chains today isn't just the fact that they are so geographically dispersed, they're so vast. So we have flowers coming in from Kenya uh, to be sold in the UK. Uh, we have, um, you know, uh, telephone systems and telephone banks uh, operating uh, in India with regards to UK based infrastructure. Uh, we have electronics being manufactured, you know, all across the world being assembled in China and then shipped and delivered here in the UK. So the, the, the geographical distances are vast, the complexity is vast. You have hundreds of individual companies participating in a single supply chain, but we also have very rapid, fast moving products and services moving down the supply chain. Uh, we don't have lead times of months or years. We have lead times of days or weeks. So we, in order to reconcile these two things, to have these kinds of highly specialized geographically uh, dispersed supply chains, along with very rapid movement down the supply chains across links of hundreds of companies, uh, this kinds of uh, this kind of online collaborative ERP system, uh, very complex and difficult to develop, but once it's there, is really necessary to to reconcile the two. Uh, we're just going to take a brief look into the first element here now, MRP, just to round up, just to give you a sense of 
uh, what kind at a base level, uh, what kind of integration does occur and, and the real benefits of doing so. Uh, so I'm going to look at the example of a game board, uh, but if we just look at the kinds of things needed for MRP, in this case materials requirements planning, uh, so you take your production schedule, you identify the parts and assemblies required, uh, build in. So so here we're, we're looking at uh, essentially our um, product breakdown structure, PBS, as it's sometimes called, uh, but also looking at rolling in our inventory management as well. So what required parts and assemblies are available, uh, looking at our uh, our invoicing or, or, or our purchasing and procurement uh, management functions uh, by rolling in and integrating systems for uh, for generating purchase orders and work orders and then doing so for the next bill of materials as well. So it does even at the basic level, MRP, Materials Requirements Planning, does integrate quite a few different systems that would traditionally operate separately. Uh, so we can see at the base level, it is quite a, a complex system. And once you roll it up to, to ERP, which brings in all kinds of different business systems, it gets more and more complex. Uh, but here, this is just an example of the kinds of materials uh, that you would identify. So with any kind of PBS or product breakdown structure, you would take your deliverable, you take in this case a board game, break it down into constituent parts with different levels. Uh, so level two here is just coming from the box base assembly. You'd have that for each one of your level one items and PBSs, even simple PBSs, uh, could go down five, six or seven levels and complex ones can go down far, far further. Uh, so you would have your uh, your PBS. You'd connect it to your procurement. Sorry, you'd connect it to your inventory management systems. You'd connect that to your uh, production schedule. That would then connect to your procurement management function uh, to bring in purchase orders. Uh, it would also connect to your rotor and your staffing to bring in work orders. Uh, so as a whole, it would be a single overview when it comes to understanding. Uh, what your material requirements are for your operation.